So earlier in tonight's service and at every service, we chanted the words from this week's Torah portion, words you know, if you have a mezuzah, it's inside your door, doorpost. Ved uh, Hanan, Deuteronomy 3 to 7, that, those are the chapters in Deuteronomy we're in. And the words of the Ve'ahavta, following the Shema, remember in Deuteronomy 6, 4, words which say, and you shall love, or old school, thou shalt love. These words naturally raise many questions about the nature of love. What is love? Is it possible to love God? What could Moses have meant by this commandment? Can love for either a human being or God be commanded? How is true love expressed? And the early rabbis struggled with all these questions. What does it mean to love God, they asked. And they answered, to love God means to treat every human being with respect and to act honestly, justly, kindly to all. By our actions, we show our love for God through our love for others. To love God means to know the joy of giving because true love is always about the other and never thinking of oneself first. And that is why in Jewish terms, as the great rabbi, the reform rabbi Gunther Plaut once said, we express our love of God through the deeds we do for others. Each mitzvah done in the right spirit is an act of loving God. It can be done everywhere and anywhere. The right spirit of which Rabbi Plout speaks are the feelings which make up love itself, feelings of loyalty, caring, respect, caring, compassion, feelings and spirit expressed in mitzvah deeds such as helping the needy or a righteous cause, pursuing justice, even the warmth of a welcoming embrace. As with love of other human beings, love of God can grow, it can change, it can ripen. Love is the passion of a lifetime, not of a moment, but of a lifetime. Maybe that's why Moses is commanded this week, all of us are commanded, to cultivate that gift of love God has put inside us and give it the highest priority, not just with your partner, but in every aspect of your life. I'm not sure we emphasize love enough, except for the love ya, love ya, check off. People say nowadays, it's almost like, see ya, love ya. My former professor used to say that while we know Tevya and Golda, Fiddler on the Roof fame, lived in an era when romantic love was not used as a foundation for marriage, charming as the song is, do you love me? Tevya really shouldn't have had to ask Golda, do you love me? She should have said it to him and he to her. In order to cultivate that love of God and love of others, we must first, I think, unlearn unlearn something many of us were taught in our, cr in our cradles. We must unlearn the idea that scarcity, which is a reality with money or so anything physical, scarcity, which is a reality in the physical world, never has to be a reality in the world of feelings. I would argue that Love may be the only limitless commodity. Everlasting love, mitzvah deeds, are things without measure. They're not things like your phone or the material world or stocks, but rather they're qualities in the human heart and in the eyes of God. True love is hard to find, not because it is scarce, but because we have made love and deeds of loving kindness scarce. Precious metals, the queen's crown jewels, 
may be a scarcity in the universe. That's why you go see them in London. But expressions of validation, words of love, tender touches, loving glances never have to be scarce. And let me close with the best proof of my contention tonight. Little kids grow up loving their parents, hopefully. Kids become teens, young adults. They fall in love. Some get married and think they know everything about love. But that's just the beginning. Then that couple bears a child or adopts a child, and they think, now I know love. The couple is thinking about a second child, but wait a minute. I love this first child so much. How can I possibly divide this commodity called love with another child? But then that Jew learns how to clap with one hand. Do you know how a Jew claps with one hand? And he or she realizes my message tonight, based on this week's Torah portion, that love is truly the only commodity that isn't scarce. It can grow and grow if you practice love. And as the song goes, if you let love in. So that couple has a second child, third child, or more. And the parents discover, as we all hopefully do, that love is the only commodity which is not scarce. And you don't have to have children or grandchildren to know this truth either. Especially if you're fortunate to live long. You learn that your love only deepens for the parents you fought with. Even if they're no longer alive. Sure, people die, stuff gets old and is eventually thrown out or sold. But love never dies, and it's priceless, too. You can't buy it. Maybe that's why we are commanded this week to love God and to love others, not just with all our heart, but with all our strength and all our might and all our being. Only then can we appreciate how love really can grow and deepen with each passing day. And let us say,